the mystery of vitrified forests all across Europe. Europe, the old continent, it's known for its amazing history, medieval times and stunning fortresses and monarchies between 700 and 300 BC. A large number of forts were built in Scotland, many of them on top of hills, with walls made of stones piled together without the use of mortar. This is the first uh, this at first may not seem like anything out of the ordinary, of course. There are plenty of such structures across the world and not just in Europe. However, the entire story changes completely, going from ordinary to extraordinary upon close examination, which reveals that many of the stones that make up the walls of these ancient fortresses are actually fused together. Some of the areas of the forts were converted into a kind of glass featuring the remains of what was, without a doubt, air bubbles and drops of molten rock, which are evidence that the stones were once subjected to temperatures that led to vitrification process. The temperatures were so high, they turned the stone into glass. Not a single scholar has been able to explain how this is possible. Could it have been around the time of the Clovis Comet? Anyway, going back to this, that was around uh, 12 and a half thousand, 13,000 years ago. Going back to this, therefore, during the last three centuries, archaeologists have tried to answer the questions surrounding the mysterious Scottish fortresses. One of the first British geologists to describe these mysterious structures and the mystery behind them was John Williams, author of Natural History of the Mineral Kingdom. It was he who first described the mystery in 1777 after looking at a few strange ruins, of which later more than a hundred examples have been found throughout Europe, mainly in Scotland. So who built them? How did they manage to vitrify the stone? And what sort of technology was used? Is it possible that we do not see the entire picture? There are too many questions and no answers at all. These structures were given the name of vitrified forts. Vitrified forts. These structures have amazed geologists for centuries because there is no scientific explanation for how the rocks fused. The temperatures at which they had to be submitted for vitrification occurred occur at comparable to the detonation of an atomic bomb, some experts say. But what is interesting is the fact that there are not one or two vitrified structures but hundreds of examples spread across Europe, with 70 forts existing in Scotland. As the first vitrified structures were discovered in Scotland, it was thought that they were exclusive to Scotland, the most famous being Dunmac, Schneikan, Betterlock, Craig, Thadraig, Ord Hill, Dun Deerdale, Knock Farrell, Dun Creech, Finavon, Barry Hill, Laws, Dungall, and worth tap or or not. However, examples of similar structures have been found in Bohemia, Silesia, Thuringia, and the provinces of the Rhine in Germany, in Hungary, in Turkey, Iran, Portugal, France, and Sweden, among others. What is strange is that the vitrification is not total in all forts, nor is it homogeneous in the walls of the same sites. Experts have found that in some cases the stones appear partially calcined and fused, while in others they are covered by a layer of vitreous enamel, and sometimes, although rarely, the entire length of the wall presents a solid mass of vitreous substance. And nobody knows how these walls became vitrified. Some scholars believe that it was intentional to strengthen the defenses of the forts but in reality, this would have weakened them, so it is unlikely that this was their intention. Experts also say that the vitrification was unlikely to be the result of war damage as a result of a siege, because in order to reach vitrification, the fires must have remained burning for days at a temperature between 1050 and 1235 degrees Celsius, something that is extremely improbable, although not impossible. Some theories point to the possibility that the vitrification of the first may have been the product of deliberate destruction, either by attackers after the capture of the forts or by their occupants as a ritual act. 
The dating of the forts across Europe covers a wide range of dates. The oldest forts are believed to have been built during the Iron Age, but there are also those many forts with similar characteristics dating from the Roman era, while the last corresponds to the Middle Ages. Recent studies suggest that they were created by massive plasma events such as solar flares. These occur when the ionized gas in the atmosphere takes the form of gigantic electric bursts which can melt and vitrify rocks. In the 1930s, archaeologists there Gordon Child and Wallace Thorn Thornycroft conducted an experiment with a gigantic fire directed towards a stone wall, an experiment that was repeated in 1980 by the archaeologist Ian Ralstone. In both cases, the experts produced the partially vitrified vitrification of some of the stones, but they failed to explain how it could have been produced on such a large scale as in the vitrified forts. In the absence of the definitive theory or conclusive evidence, the vitrified forts of Europe continue to be one of the strangest geological and archaeological anomalies in the world, eluding explanation for centuries. This was from Ancient Code on Humans Are Free. Now I'm going to give you my theory of these forts. Now we know that the ancient forts, for example, the ones that had columns in ancient Greece, even the forts in uh, the uh, temples in ancient uh, Jerusalem, ancient Israel, uh, these ancient forts, these ancient temples, we would say, had in their uh, stones, they had holes, and they would pour uh, iron and uh, metal inside those holes. Obviously, they would be some kind of a lightning rod, because all these temples and forts, both, most of them were built up on hills. In other words, the enemy for the fort had to come upwards, and that would be very difficult. So they were pretty high up. These forts were high high up on hills and mountains. So uh, because of the fact that these forts were stone constructions without any lightning rods to uh, direct the lightning, the, the lightning bolt into the earth, obviously this lightning could have caused such damage. That's my theory. Now, how hot is lightning? 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, according to... Uh, this thing here, National Weather Service, is lightning hotter than the sun? Yep, the answer is a bolt of lightning which can reach temperatures of roughly 30,000 Kelvins or 53,540 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so this, this is hotter than the sun, according to uh, Seeker.com. The sun, on the other hand, is eclipsed in this case. This surface temperature is just 6,000 Kelvin. That's 10,340 degrees Fahrenheit. It's one amazing piece of science trivia, but what exactly does it mean? It's important to realize the sun's surface is actually its coolest layer. Dive down its core and you enter plasma temperatures about 15 million Kelvins. But uh, it could be that they did not have proper lightning rods uh, uh, on these structures, and these lightning bolts were able to hit specific areas of these forts or these structures and cause these um, certain areas and regions of the forts to become glass-like vitrified, which is of course not beneficial for the fort because it would make it uh, less durable. So the uh, lightning bolts, as we said before, about 53,540 degrees Fahrenheit could have been the reason why these uh, forts all over Europe, which were not properly built with lightning uh, directive, uh, lightning rods, were just were found to have uh, been vitrified this way. What do you think? That's my take on it. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.